Until our past two videos, we have been talking about this cross browser testing, but now that's going to start posing us some other problems because the cross browser testing is actually using the code of what is called as the concrete classes. The concrete classes will start making you a lot of problem in pretty much coming days, but I'm going to address that pretty soon in this course because it's an advanced course and learning the advanced technique beforehand is going to give you an idea of what we'll be talking about in future lectures as well. So the concrete class that we have at the moment are these, like we have used a lot of concrete classes like driver fixture. We have used the new driver fixture. And similarly, we have used get web driver method with a browser driver, something like this over here. And we have actually created an instance of the browser driver. So every time you're going to call this get web driver, you're going to create a new object of the browser driver which is not quite right. Similarly for the driver fixer as well. So in order to get around this concrete classes problem, we are going to be creating an interfaces, which is going to start making more sense. And if you don't really get what I really mean about this concrete classes, let's not even start to jump the gun, but rather let's see the code that we have got even in the Selenium library itself. So if you see in the Selenium library, we have something called as the Chrome driver. And if you go to the implementation of the Chrome driver or the Firefox driver, if I just go to the definition over here, you can see that this is the Chrome driver and you can see this is the Chrome driver inherits the Chromium driver over here. And if I go to the definition of the Chromium driver, you will see that it is actually inheriting from the web driver class file. And this web driver class file in turn is implementing the iWeb driver interface along with other interfaces that you are, can see over here. So this iWeb driver interface, if you go over there, you will see that it actually has got some of the familiar methods of Selenium like URL, titles, page source, current window handles, close, quit, manage, navigate, and switch to. And this iWeb driver of Selenium is what is going to be implemented by all the browser companies that is with that is out there in the market pretty much like chrome firefox safari or edge chrome browser or whatever it is so what it is telling us is if you want to have an contract implementation of an methods something like these you need to have i web driver interface so that everybody follow the rules or the guidance which is given by this company, which is nothing but the Selenium. That's exactly is going to be true while we work with the concrete classes as well. And probably in order to understand this concrete class problem, I will also start writing a simple code so that you can start understanding what I really mean. So I'm just going to start creating a new project and I'm going to write a simple console application. And this is basically like C sharp six. You will see that there is no main method or something like that. You can just write console dot write line and it's going to start working for you. So that's why it is just coming up. So don't worry about that yet. I'm going to be creating a class file over here and I'm going to call this class file as custom printer. And this custom printer class file is going to be basically doing as this one. So it is, let's make this as public and I'm going to write a console dot write line or maybe sorry i'm gonna write a method here like public custom message and this guy is very clever enough that he's gonna prefix some message for you something like custom message prefix and you have got one more class file here which is going to be actually using this print custom message itself so i'm going to create a class file here and i'm going to call this as caller a and he wants to print the custom message itself. So what he's going to do is he's going to write a public method. So public void print message. And this guy is going to be using this custom printers message. So what he's going to do is he's going to call the custom printer class file. Uh, so he's going to create a object for that. So I'm going to say something like custom printer printer is equal to new custom printer and he's going to call this printer print custom message and he's going to pass a message something like so you can see that we have created a concrete class over here and now we have got one more caller class file i'm going to make it this bit quicker so that you can understand 
a concept here. And this class file actually wants to print the message as well, but he don't want to print with the prefix that is available with this particular message. So let's not even get into the problematic things yet. Let's go to the program.cs file over here and I'm going to call this color a control dot and color a is equal to new color a and color a dot print message something like this so now let's try to run this particular code and see what's going to basically happen we're going to get a message saying custom message prefix my message from color a but now this color b actually don't want that prefix which is available on this particular custom printer itself rather he wants some other message so what will happen is if he is going to be using the custom printer then he will end up in actually having using the same prefix value or he will be end up creating a separate method on this particular class file which is not quite right rather we can get around this problem by creating what is called as an interfaces itself so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go to this custom printer over here and within this custom printer i'm actually going to extract an interface and you can see that you can do it in visual studio much much easily uh, so you can just extract the print custom message over here and you can see that this i custom printer of this particular custom printer is actually just giving you a way to actually print the message so now you can go to this class b.cs file and while you can just call this i custom printer which is this one and let's do control dot to implement the interface so now what you can do is you can just call this print custom message and all you're going to do is you can put your own custom message that you really wanted to print over here so this way you can see that you're going to be reducing the pain points that you have got with that particular message so all you're going to do is you're going to say console dot write line of this message and then you're going to say my own custom message something like this and this way he is going to be very very happy like how it has to be implemented and we don't even require this guy as well as this one so now you can see that we have avoided the problem of having a custom message which has been forced by the concrete class itself and this avoids other problems like testing much much easily with the interface because if you don't really have the concrete class itself you can still use the interface to make that happen you can do the unit testing much much easily which probably will start making more sense while we start working with the integration testing in this course but yes this is the problem with the concrete class and we are already in the verge of writing a bad code in our last video so we are going to start correcting it from the start itself so that's about the concrete class and we already have two concrete class usage within our code and using concrete class will start posing you challenges which we may be ending up solving by using dependency for all the concrete classes while we may not even require some of them while using them and in order to solve this problem we are going to be using what is called as the dependency injections and inversion of control so if you're not heard about this dependency injection dependency injection is one of the solid principle which helps you to decouple the code by making sure that it depends on the abstractions not on the implementation of the concrete classes pretty much exactly the same example that we just saw and the concept is called as the inversion of control well inversion of control is nothing new it is considered as a programming style used to invert the flow of controls and that's what exactly we are going to be doing within our code as well and in order to achieve this dependency injection and inversion of control we are going to be using two libraries one is going to be the artifact library which is very popular among dotnet community you have, might have used it before if not we are going to be using that within this course and xunit.dependency injection this xunit.dependency injection is quite amazing because if you have worked with asp.net and if you are familiar with asp.net asp.net by default is actually using a lot of dependency injection on their services and on their containers to register everything within themselves that's why asp.net is very very easy to test as well that's the power of asp.net and that's exactly the same concept used here in the xunit dependency injection which do the same inversion of control for you and as i told you if you are familiar with 
the ASP.NET dependency injection, then whatever that I'm going to be talking in our next video and following videos, it's going to be a cakewalk for you because that's exactly the same idea and concept of the ASP.NET. And again, I'm insisting you all, please go ahead and watch the crash course on developing the ASP.NET application so that you will learn a lot more detail of how you can develop your own application and how the dependency injections are being solved in ASP.NET. That is exactly what we'll be doing for our testing purpose as well, to make our life more easier to resolve the dependencies for the web driver or the browser drivers and stuff. So starting our next video, we are going to be refactoring our code that we wrote in our last video.